What's up? Michael. What's up, Mike? How's everybody doing? The captain oh, is here. He is here. Dude, oh. what, what a backdrop, by the way. <laughs> it looks like the sunshine in there today. Yeah. We're here in Toronto? Yeah. It's a, it's like the first, like, like, I mean, we've had a few nice days, but today is like, today is like. Today's the day. Today. Would you agree with that? <laughs> uh, it's amazing. Yeah, here, I, mean, I, I went out yesterday. I went out for a run. That's how, that's how nice it was. It was like, I need to just go outside for something. So yeah, yeah. It, was, it was good. Hold on I mean, one second. I, I'm having. I don't even know how to do a split screen. Yeah, I'm not far <laughs> behind you, Drew. What's up, guys? Welcome back to episode five of Reds Rewind. We're going back to 2017 once again, that trouble winning season. Everyone loves watching a game from that season. And of course, we've got the Eastern Conference Championship, leg to the second straight Eastern Conference title for Toronto FC. We've got three great guests to relive this one. We'll start off with a guy who's now out in Colorado after spending some great years in Toronto, Drew Moore. Drew, how have you been? I've been good, good man. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm happy to be on with, with these two legends uh, and you as well, Eric. But uh, yeah, during these crazy times where, uh, you know, my family and I are just making the most of it and I'm trying to stay fit and uh, prolong my career as, as long as possible, which I feel like I've been doing for, for a little while now. <laughs> And uh, over to your, your backline partner there from that 2017 season, someone who knows a little bit about playing for some legendary teams from the 2012 San Jose team, 2019 LAFC, Stephen Beta Shore. Beta, welcome back. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excited to see uh, these beautiful faces again. It's been a long time, so uh, glad everyone's doing well. And yeah, thanks for having me. And I know obviously someone that all TFC fans have been clamoring to see and hear from is the captain, Michael Bradley. Michael, how have you been? How's the rehab going? I'm sure people are anxious to see how you've been. Everything is good, thanks. Yeah, making making good progress with the ankle, so that part's been that part's been good. And other than that, just uh, like everybody, trying to enjoy the time at home with with my family and uh, just take things one day at a time. Absolutely. Well, we're, we're all hoping that uh, sooner rather than later we, we can get back on the field. But right now, next best thing is to to look back on a on a really classic match and one of those those epic BMO Field nights back from November of 2017, the second leg of the Eastern Conference Championship against the Columbus Crew. So let's get into it. Let's uh, let's relive that night back at BMO Field. The Columbus are a good side, but make no bones about it. Toronto FC, an enormous favorite. They've got to get the job done, Terry. And I think this pressure, TFC, really raised their game to another I missed that red tunnel. <laughs> and really led by Captain Michael Bradley. I thought he was excellent in the first Someone got a lot of action in the 2017 playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Eric. <laughs> It was just what, a couple weeks before this, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> what team were you rooting for at that point, Eric? <laughs> uh, uh, let me tell you, uh, no one was rooting harder for TFC than I was. I can promise you that. And going out there and delivering on a night in front of the big fans of BMO Field. After a dominating, record-breaking regular season, it's been kind of a bumpy, sometimes frustrating, controversy-filled playoff run. But now, one game for a trip to the MLS Cup Final. Tonight, they welcome back their front two of Josie Altador and Sebastian Jovinko after suspension. And Greg Vanny goes back to... Decent lineup right there. That is a decent lineup. <laughs> Missed that lineup right there. Oh, man. That was one of the things that I, I – like, the TSN's been showing a bunch of these games. I've texted both of you guys at different times as they've been on. Like, the, the playoffs the, – the, the four games in the playoffs leading into the final this year, like, I, you forget how many – like, how many different guys had to play, how many – you know, injuries, suspensions. Um, you know, we had to make some, some early – subs in, in game it was like it was I, I i forgot about that part when yeah. you think back it's not the first thing you remember always it didn't change us at all you know we were still the same team no matter no matter who was on no matter what formation we were playing like i think we were all confident that we would step on the field and win win a game if we needed to absolutely classic seven right there draw him close get the foul I, I don't know about you guys. I remember, like, of, of all of the playoff games, this was the one that I remember, e like, even much more so than the final. Like, driving to the game in the bus. I remember, I think we met at the hotel before the game, and we, you know, going over to the, going over to the stadium. Like, I can remember, like, there was, like, there was some tension that night. Like, this was, like, the, you know, 
we played all year. The goal had been always to get back to the final. And like this was like this was the night where it just had to happen. So I, like I said, I can whenever I see highlights or anything from this game, that's what I that's the kind of the, the the first feeling that I remember. Yeah, I agree. I think not getting an away goal in Columbus also just put that seed in the back of your head. You know. We, we have to try to keep a clean sheet here, even though I, I felt confident we could score goals if we needed to. But this was the game where we really, I felt like had to be turned on defensively, especially. I actually I actually felt more confident going to this game just because at their place, we were missing Josie and Saba. So I'm, I felt like, dang, we, we accomplished something going to their place, 0-0, got a, got a shutout, and then coming home with those two back. So I definitely felt a lot more confident going to this one. I know what this oh, I, I, I remember this play too. This is when I oh. realized Mike was a lot faster than I Yeah, this is where Michael turns <laughs> on the Jets. All right. Because I wasn't getting back to it in time. And this is where I'm like, Michael, high five. Michael, high five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, I'm going. I'm running out. <laughs> oh, I remember that play. What a play that was. Yeah, it was, man. I feel like that play in particular gets lost in the shuffle when you, when you think about some of the biggest plays from the 2017 playoffs, obviously Josie in the, in, in the final, but this one is, is one of those that, that maybe doesn't come up in a lot of the conversations, but that's a game changer right there early in the first yeah, half. Yeah, it is. If, first 20. If Mike doesn't get back there and do everything he can just to even throw him off and, and that goes in the back of the net, this, this could completely change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good effort by me. Yeah, that's big time, man. For me, I can remember the first 20 minutes of the game realizing that like this was th this was a different Columbus team than than we than we usually got. You know, I mean, remember they 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 played the they played like three four two one. Yeah, they they were the formation for this. yeah. They 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 didn't try to play as much. They didn't really try to step up step up and press. Like they were really you know Pedro Santos played left wing back and did a really good job on the night. Like they they were really really disciplined and really determined to like close off space and to not make the game easy for us and, and i can remember like to your point earlier drew thinking like the you know the the first goal on a game like this is going to be big because i don't think there's going to be a ton of a ton of chances either way run him down the line he's a lot of athleticism to his game he was in a comfortable position then just got a little bit sloppy tried to play it back to stefan and I think this is the penalty kick here, isn't I it? So too. I didn't realize it was such really? a yeah. botched corner kick from a booba car there. I oh, don't know how oh, this is, isn't it? it? Yeah, because I thought it was later. And it's a throw for Toronto FC, who won here 5-0 at BMO Field against Columbus. A challenge coming in from Santos, and it's another Toronto corner on the far side after positive play there by Steve. Beta wanted the foul there. I did want the foul. I thought that was foul right now. <laughs> Beta can win a foul in a 5v2 box game. Come on, ref. He's <laughs> very positive when he got the ball driving forward. All right, corner. This is good. So is this the penalty then? Yeah, this is it. This is, yeah. yeah. So this one actually, it was kind of played off of the corner before. Um, I was setting a pick for Josie. So on this one, I went to set the pick for him, and I just turned and went myself, and I think it threw Josh Williams off. He, he was thinking I was going to go pick Josie's man, and instead I just turned and went myself and just got a little bit of space from him. On his face, in my opinion. Gets a march on him, yeah, pulls him back. It's right into the area where... Drew I still think I could have gotten ahead on it. And... Both hands all over Moore in the end. I wish I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and knowing knowing the, this result, I'm sure. Just would have never thought this. That's on Wildman. He says he's perfect right before he lines up, and then he, of course... He... I remember not really being phased by this, to be honest. Uh, you know, I think a, a missed penalty kick a lot of times can 
can really throw off your momentum and, and hurt a team's, you know, character and stuff. But I think we just brushed it off and, and realized we just needed to continue to do what, what we're going to do to give ourselves, the, you know, the best chance and not let it not let it get under us too much. Yeah. <laughs> at club and international level continues to build on that his biggest save yet in this magnificent playoffs you know i can like at, right in around this point in the game i, I can remember thinking like you, not frustrated but just like all right we, we've got a you know they, they're they're deep they're they're not going to give away much today obviously we've just missed a penalty and and you know we Remember in different moments already towards the end of that season, we had started to play, uh, we had started to go away from three in the back and we had started to put an extra midfielder, an extra attacker on and and, uh, and, and be able to, you know, we, we all felt like we could be a little bit more dangerous, have a little bit more of the ball, um, you know, ask even a few more questions of them. And I can remember right right at the end of the first half thinking like, yeah, this is a day where, where we're gonna, you know, we're probably gonna need to do that. Right in front of Greg Berhalter, the Columbus coach, who is a former international teammate. And, I'm, and then I'm pretty sure Greg came in at halftime and like right away was like, we, I think we made that switch right did at the beginning. Did we make the, of the switch? Did, did Zap come off? I think so. I think we so. Because we went with four at the back in the first leg in Columbus, right? Yeah, there, obviously with Joe, without Josie and Seba, we played like 4-3-3 or 4-1-4-1. Um, and then we, for, for this game, we went back to our normal 3-5-2. And, and I think... Like I said, we'll see when these highlights pick up in the second half. I think at halftime, Eric came off and 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 Marky came on, and we played uh, we played our version of the diamond. Yeah, I definitely know Zab was off. I just don't know if it was exactly at half or like the 56th minute mark. But I do remember he switched that up. Just wasteful play, much like we saw in leg one from Columbus Crew. Hickory was a culprit there where they could have turned, got the half turn and played a more incisive ball forward. Vasquez here has Peter Shaw making the run to the right. Slides it in instead for Javinko. Peter Shaw keeps it in. Now Vasquez you guys talked about being anxious going into this one a little bit, but in, in terms of going into Columbus without Josie and Seba, now you have you have to win at BMO, especially in 2017. You guys were so good. Must have been some level of confidence there, not just knowing a, a win gets you at MLS Cup. Yeah, for sure. I mean, look, we we were like Beta said, we we were confident. I mean, there 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 hadn't been many teams that had come to BMO that year and and had had an easy time. So you know if. We, we would have always taken our chances um, playing one game at BMO to get to a final. But, there, uh, you know, there was it, it was clear at this point that, um, you know, the, the plan for teams in the playoffs was to come into was to come into BMO and to try to really, you know, just make things tight, take away space, um, you know, and, and you know, it, it leaves it on a oh, what it just, this is the craziest little spell right there. There's so many chances. I'm like, someone's going to hit it. Someone's going to hit it. I don't know if anyone actually got a shot off. Uh, almost, yeah. You know, the, 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 the margin for error just goes, it goes away, right? And so at, at that point, you know, it, it, for me, it was like everything that year had been about getting back to the final and, and giving ourselves a, a chance to lift that trophy at, at BMO in front of our fans. And this was kind of like the last step that we had to take. And so it was, yeah, I mean, anxious is a, is a good word for me, at least. I expect Jamo to score that the way he was going that season, man. Right? Just lost his footing. Oh. I remember thinking this, this is going in. Just like the interchanging runs and the layoffs, I'm like, oh, this is so pretty. This is a goal. And then, yeah, whether heavy touch or losing his footing or whatever, no one really got a clean shot off. Had a shot of goal, but nonetheless, it was a tremendous finish, but clearly offside. Columbus survivor. Real scale there at the end of this first half. Lovely ball from Trapp to find Affle cutting in from the right side. Abu, Higuain, back that was the thing. Do you see how many numbers that we ended up getting back on that play? Like, I think that was the good thing about our team because everybody worked their tail off. You know, we obviously 
has the attacking aspect of and keep possession. But just like that, you'll have, you know, eight guys uh, as a unit defending. And look at, you know, in five, ten seconds, we're all in the other box again. So that was the nice thing about our team, man. We worked so hard. I thought this team did such a good job at shifting gears from regular season play to the playoffs because towards the end of the season and regular season play, we would walk in anywhere at home on the road and win 3-0, 4-0, 4-1, whatever it was. And then the playoffs seemed to be more cagey affairs, low scoring, just grind it out as MLS playoffs were. And I think we proved in the playoffs that we could very much do that as well. I mean, we would have loved to have won, the, you know, won these games by three, four goals. But you know, with the teams we were playing against and, and the way the playoffs are, man, we, we, we grinded them out. And that's, you know, that impressed me about this, about this team as well. We were so complete. We could, we could win games in so many different ways. We could, you know, we had tactical flexibility. We had mentality. We could, we could play football. We could, you know, we could fight. I mean, that part was, that part was, was, was different. Was out very early in this half time, had his jersey on, getting ready to come in. He's been warming up for the last 10 minutes or so. Yeah, right. He's going to be replacing Eric Zavaleta. So it's yeah, so Marky comes on at halftime. Eric came, Eric went off. Drew and Chris played in the center. Beta and Justin still as our, as our outside backs. And then, and then, you know, I was deep. Oso and Marky tilted a little bit each way and then that gave Victor the freedom to kind of play in between the lines and go where he needed to go to, to help us, uh, you know, be the extra man or create a chance. And for me, you know, obviously this, this was also then what, what set the, set the groundwork to play like this in the final as well. I think. We will be heading to extra time and then possibly... Well, it's funny you say that, Michael, because uh, you, you did a, a watch back of the 2017 MLS Cup with uh, Greg, and he said that he was thinking about doing that formation change within hours after this game uh, to, to, to change to the 4 4 2 diamond, which I found it really interesting. Yeah, I mean, l like I said, I think inside the team, you know, there had been a feeling that, like, as we had gotten towards the end of the season, that, that you know, some of our... Here's Josie's injury. Some of our best moments were were playing more four in the back, but obviously we had been so good with three that we didn't want you didn't want to just change everything right away. Um, but I think Greg's feel for Greg's feel for how to then you know use both in the right moments was so important. I didn't actually realize when when this injury happened how how bad it was. I don't know if it was because I was far away and, and he actually stayed on the field initially, but not until after the game did I realize, how, you know, how, how bad it was and how bad it looked. It's just like, like, what a worry. Yeah, I'm with you. I didn't realize either. And then you can see afterwards, you, you see the, the way his ankle goes. And I mean, he didn't, obviously, after this game, then before the final, he didn't train many times before the final. Mate, what, once, twice, tops. Yeah. Well, I'm sure he's upped his warm-up routine in the far corner of this field in the south side. Yeah, he gets rolled up on really badly right there. Warm-up drills, you would be the obvious choice to come on. See again, just innocuous. Don't think it's intentional from Affle. At the back post, he slips first, and then Altador just... Collides into Affle or Affle. Wouldn't be a playoff night at BMO if it weren't for a little <laughs> drama, though, right? Altidol hobbles off on the far side of the pitch, but it looks like he'll be okay to carry on for now. Josie Altidol coming back into the game. There it is. Yeah. He, like, look at him limping too. But then adrenaline right here is like, okay, I'm good. <laughs> I mean, that's a world class goal right there. What a touch. Oh, man. Guarantee he doesn't feel in the celebration. <laughs> it's such a good goal the way those three are able to, to yeah, take such such a tight space and, and use each other and, and you know, get the timing and, and precision of every part of the play right. I mean, with, with so much on the line, that part's incredible. What a moment of brilliance from Josie Alton. This is the kind of stuff... I mean, 
we got used to we got used to seeing this season for a while, man. It was unbelievable. I mean, it's like three against seven. Th that one touch with his left foot, though, is just the awareness, and then the the composure to you know. Yeah, dude, that's that's a great goal. I feel like Victor even kind of hesitates on his pass, just a just a split second to let Josie get a little bit more separation from Abubakar, you know. And it's just it's inch perfect, man. Yeah. yeah. Just about to say the same thing. He, he gives him that that half second to freeze him. And he doesn't know whether to step to the ball or to stay with Josie, and that's all he needed. That was just incredible. You know, it's funny for me in the in the first half, like like. As, as I've said a few times now, it was tight and cagey and, and you could feel a little bit of just this, this tension and anxiousness. In the second half, I, there was, for me, there was never a doubt. Like the way we played in the second half and, and uh, you know, they, they didn't have much at all. Oh, I'm surprised we didn't go on to win this game 2 or 3-0, to be fair. Look at this great footwork in the touchline past Pedro Santos. He started to look a little bit more tired to me. Victor Vasquez with the corner. Go on, Drew. Oh. Get up there. I'm trying to set my center back partner up there. A man still searching for his first Toronto FC goal. What a chance. Does Mavinga have a goal for TFC yet? Are we still waiting? I don't think He'll tell so. me he does. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's going to be an epic goal when it comes up. <laughs> and an even more epic celebration. Yeah. Yeah, he, his closest one was that Minnesota own goal. He, uh, he claimed it, though. <laughs> yeah, he still claims it. That's right. Michael's here like, that better not be red, ref. That better not be red. <laughs> I, I had a little split second where I was like... Just think about what you're doing here. Yeah. Higuain back down for Santos. Kamara, Higuain playing that central midfield position. Vasquez with the delivery, flicked away as far as Michael Bradley. Athol chasing across to the far side. Bradley. A good cross into the middle, nothing you couldn't get there. Santos did really well to flick it away. That's right, then Nick came on, and I think we went back to back to three in the back at the end to close it out, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think yeah. they get a, a decent chance here. One yeah, one, one pretty good chance, maybe. Yeah. Or, or, Bradley, with an advanced row there, couldn't win it back. Here come the crew down the right now. No, it's not the, no. the, I think it's past it. I don't think it's an uh, injury time. Yeah, it's past it. One last chance for Columbus. As it comes towards Athol, it's blocked by Morrow. It's all over at BMO Field. And Toronto FC are Eastern Conference champions once again. Josie Altidore with the goal that sends them back to MLS Cup for the second year in a row. I'd like to present to Michael Bradley, captain of Toronto FC, the 2017 Eastern Conference Championship Trophy. That feeling will never get old right there. What a feeling that is. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Especially at BMO. Nothing like it. But except for a week later, but. but. But given that one, especially after 2016 and, and, and the way that that ended, to, to have won the Supporters' Shield the next year and know that getting back to the final means another crack at it, how much did that night mean to you guys? Yeah, I mean, that was, for, for me, when, when, when we were able to, to finish things off and get ourselves another final at home, that was like, th there was no way we were losing another one. And so for me, that was like, you know, Playoffs are the playoffs, and, and obviously we were we, we had had such a good season and, and we, we had such a good team that you knew that you were going to get everybody's absolute best crack in the playoffs, and, and everybody was going to do it in, in their own way. You know, Red Bull did it, um, you know, in, in their way. Columbus, um, the same. And, and when we were able to then get through, you know, kind of pass each of those tests and, and get ourselves one more one more of the of the biggest nights that that was that was like a, a huge a huge 
sigh of relief. And, and like I said, at that point, there was no chance we were losing a final. It's exactly that. Just that relief, right? Because that's what we've been striving for all year, you know, after the 2016 loss. And, uh, you know, it was the final step, you know, there were a lot of steps that we had to get to uh, or past to get to that moment. And that was the kind of final step to, you know what, winning almost cup. Cause that was always just the most important thing for us. So, uh, it was a great moment and an even better moment, you know, a, a week later. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad we have YouTube and we can relive these moments. I've been doing it every, every week, uh, ever since, you know, I mean, I, not, I don't think a week goes by that I don't go back and, and, and relive some of these moments. They're just so special. And, you know, it's not just the, the trophies that you win and, 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 uh, uh, you know, the, the, the championship and all that stuff. It's the guys that you do it with. It's seeing their faces, you know, uh, both during the game and in the celebrations and stuff. And it's just, uh, it's, it's a, it's a special, you know, it's special moments and it's special bonds that you form and, uh, to be able to, you know, come back a couple of years later and, and, and relive it, uh, with each other for a little bit is, uh, uh, you know, just makes it awesome. Yeah, it was truly one of those, those epic BMO field nights for the, the greatest team in MLS history, the 2017 Toronto FC team. Well, that's all we got for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. For Stephen Bateshore, Drew Moore, and Michael Bradley, I've been Eric Giacometti. Thanks for watching.